Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're going to be doing some Q&As, thus I have the tablet out in front of me. Uh, we're also going to talk about some of the new products that we have and how some of those videos are coming along. We'll start with some of this, what we have. We've got the Visualizer, which is the FX2000 from Behringer, because uh, we have a lot of people who really want it. It's got a ton of effects, but it's also a great piece of hardware to show how to do things on the mixer when it comes to using the insert buttons. So we're going to have a video that talks about that and talking about that. We also have the brand new mixers from Behringer, the Pro FX series. Uh, it's the version three. They are different from the version two. So we're gonna be having videos on that and how they all work and a good solid tutorial on what all the buttons and knobs do because there's an awful lot of buttons and knobs and a lot of them are new on this line of products. So we're gonna be talking about that on upcoming videos too. For today, we're gonna use it as reference for the Q and A's. So, Let's get right to it. We'll start with a, since it's Thanksgiving in the States, we'll start with a uh, Canadian only question. Uh, this one here has to do with Acoustic Audio Canada, which is uh, Acoustic Audio, but not the uppercase one that you see in the States. This is Acoustic Audio Canada, and it's in reference to their speakers, a 4315 TN, uh, and they also have a TH. Those ones are currently out of stock. They have new models, which we have videos for, which are gonna be launching very soon. They're gonna be for the actual models, a 4315 TH-19, and also for the 4315 TN-19. Uh, different, though, well, also 15 inch. Those should be coming out shortly. So if you are looking for a 4315 TN or a 4315 TH, currently not available. Uh, on to questions. Let's see, what do we got? So our first actual question is about the Alto TS-312. Uh, at least that's the video that's made reference to. He wants to know if he can actually connect uh, a mixer to one speaker using a Y splitter and will that get him all the sound or make it louder? Uh, here he's making reference to more volume. Now, when looking at the actual speaker and deciding if I'm going to get more volume out of it because the mixer, no, but if you only use one channel on the mixer, so if I use one channel, a left or a right channel instead of both, uh, depending on the music I'm playing, if it's microphones and they're set up to an input channel that has a pan on it, so that looks, look for the pan or balance. If you're looking at a single line channel in the mixer, that will come out of both channels equally if the balance, or in this case, pan is set dead even. Uh, if you're hooking up something that has uh, a left and right inserted into the mixer, it won't. If the actual channel says balance on it, uh, you need to get both of those channels out of here into the speaker. I'm more interested in plugging one input at least into the speaker. I don't necessarily need two, uh, but I do want to get both of the outputs from the actual mixer out to that one speaker. So if I have a mixer, run two cables to the one speaker that would probably be best because then you're going to get all of the left and all of the right signal. I call it mixed stereo into that one speaker. This way you're not missing any of the music. So could you use a splitter? If I used a coupler at this end it would probably be better than using a splitter at the speaker. You're not going to make the speaker any louder. It's just going to be fuller and richer sound because you're going to have all of the left and right signal going into that speaker. So there you go. I hope that helps. So a question from M. Mala. Uh, the, it's referencing on the Behringer uh, B212 with the VQ15 uh, D subwoofer from Behringer. Now these are both the Euro Live series products, but the question has reference to the subwoofers and to um, the Yamaha DXR10. Now these 10 inch tops, um, they're not cheap and I'm going to say they're pretty powerful stuff. I would think that those speakers are more powerful than those subwoofers, even though that's a 15 inch subwoofer and you're putting it with a 10 inch top. Uh, you wanna know if we can carry for 300 people. Personally, I don't think the subwoofer is gonna carry it. Uh, when I uh, did the video on the subwoofer, I said it was a, a rec room, uh, garage band style subwoofer, which is awesome for what it is because the price point is just fantastic on that subwoofer. But I certainly wouldn't take it out for a crowd of 300 people, even if I had two of them. Uh, I'd be more likely if I couldn't afford to get uh, something that can carry that space, uh, some PRX, let's say from JBL, that sort of thing. I'm not picking on JBL specifically, but in that price point, 
uh, I would go out and maybe rent them for that particular show uh, and then save up more money so I can afford something in that caliber down the road. Um, you do need to buy subs when you get to about halfway, but don't, don't buy a subwoofer just because you want to buy a subwoofer. Buy a subwoofer that's going to meet your needs uh, at least 60% of the time. So uh, if that means you're doing 150 people at a time, then so be it. Buy yourself something like the Alto TS318 subs. Those will, two of those subs, 150 people, you'll be fine. So if you need to do uh, on a regular basis, like 56% of the time, groups of 300 people at a time, then buy yourself something more expensive that'll accommodate that size. Uh, you're reaching the limit though of what just two subs will do. So here's a question from Chris. Now Chris has asked me if I've actually done videos on the Alto Black Series, in this particular case the subwoofer, uh, and the answer is I have not. Uh, but I do know the overall feature package of it, and the Black Series was roughly the same power range, maybe a little bit more, but pretty much the same power range of what the TS3s are. Um, but they had a DSP setting controller on the back. They had, a, they had a lot of functionality when it came to display options on the back. I think this was one of these great little projects that Alto had, uh, and they came out with a really nice, nice speaker when they did that product. Uh, and then they kind of refined what they thought the customer was looking for. So um, do they sound just as good? I think they're going to be in the same neighborhood, even without listening to it. Um, so, I mean, if you have some black tops and you're looking to get subwoofers, by all means, buy the TS3s. I think that would be a pretty good uh, pairing off. But uh, outside of that, from what I've heard, the craftsmanship, the quality, the build are very, very similar. Uh, the Black Series uh, had more of a finish like the TS2s, if you've ever seen those, uh, up close versus uh, the TS3 subwoofers. So, but at the end of the day, I, I don't think you're going to be that far off. And sorry, I have to say no video on the Black Series. But remember, they're discontinued. So yes, if you pick one up secondhand, definitely go out and listen to it. Make sure it sounds good uh, because, you know, you don't know what the last person was doing with it. So a question from Christopher, and he's asking reference to the Eon 615, uh, but he's talking about the Eon 1, Eon 1 Pro. Uh, it's for a four-piece band. They do small areas, small events, and they need something portable, and we're thinking, you know, which way to go. That's my impression here from the question. Uh, they're looking to, you know, connect up to a small mixer and uh, basically have all of that work and be portable. Um, Depending on the type of music you're going to be playing uh, as a band, uh, is definitely going to decide if you need one or two of these things. Um, nice part is, is you can connect them together if you decide to get two. And I'd be more likely to get the um, to get the the one, the Eon One, unless you need battery power. Uh, I think the Eon One can carry more people in the venue. Uh, you're definitely paying for the battery and the compressed size of the actual subwoofer, the base unit, and the overall cosmetics of the top. Uh, does it sound better? For small groups, 25 to 50 people, the Pro is, uh, is, a, is a nicer machine to carry around because it weighs well, less and looks nicer, I guess. But I would stick with the, uh, with the actual Eon, sorry, with the Eon 1. Uh, and if you find that it just doesn't fill the space enough or balance off well against the actual band, then you're going to have to look at buying a second one. So keep that in mind when you're buying the first one that you might be buying a second one. So keep the eye on the price. If you're looking for a more powerful alternative to that, uh, then you're definitely looking at the Electro Voice Evolve. I think that is pretty much the benchmark in those lines of products right now. Uh, I really like it. We've done it here. We've had the product. We've tried it out. We have one that's coming into the showroom as a permanent piece. So I would definitely, if you want to have, if you're looking for power and performance and you want to get something that you might only have to buy one, uh, then the Electro Voice Evolve would be that one. So yes, it does cost a little bit more, but you might get away with just having one of those for a four piece band in small venues. So have a look at that one. See what you think. So this is more of a comment from uh, GoToDJs, uh, and he's, he wasn't happy. Uh, he basically, uh, he's got an uh, Alto, and the Bluetooth stopped working on it. And the GoToDJ, he said that you've had it after only three months. I would get it serviced. 
things happen, uh, as people like to say, even Ferraris break down. So it doesn't matter. Uh, it came with a one-year warranty, so definitely have somebody look at that and take care of that for you because it shouldn't have happened. Question from Grim Star. So he's uh, doing a podcast, or yes, that's what he says. He's doing a podcast, and he, it's going to be taking colors. He's got a mixer. It only has one effects row on it, and he wants to be able to take colors and still be able to use the effects but not have the effects on the collar itself. Now, if you have a mixer or any mixer uh, and you have built-in effects, you basically make sure and use the effects button and turn that down on the channels you don't want the effects and turn it up on the channels you want the effects. You are gonna have to be able to dial that in, dial it out. Uh, you don't exactly say which mixer you have, but uh, that's, you know, if I'm thinking about it, if I plugged in my color box on the channel, let's say seven and eight on a mixing board, uh, and I didn't want any effects on that color, I would turn that down. And then that would allow me to put audio effects on top of, of me, let's say who's plugged in channel one. So have the effects on channel one up, have the effects on the color box down, and you should be able to do that. No problem. Um, if that doesn't answer your question, let me know what model you have. So a question from David, and it has to do with the pile mixer, the, the all-in-one type mixer, the PMXU48BT, awesome value. Uh, it probably still an incredible price if they have any stock left. Uh, so can this be hooked up to a system with a 1001 amplifier? Yes, it can. Nice part about all preamped mixers is they can all be hooked up to amplifiers and then speakers. Before there was powered speakers, you would always have your mixer go to the amps and then from the amps go off to the speakers. That's regardless of the mixer and regardless of the amplifier. If you've got a preamp mixer, it's going to be able to plug into a powered amplifier and then from there go off to the speakers. So for sure, for sure, you can go out and spend $50, get Bluetooth, get everything that was on that mixer and then just plug it into a, a power amplifier and off you go. You'll be all set. Have fun with that. It's a great little mixer if that's the one you bought. All right, I just have to get some product for our next question. So it's in regards to the one of the last videos I put up, which is for the X-Vibe, the U4, which is a system that allows you to have a monitor wirelessly connected to your mixer or controller or anything else that you want to plug a set of headphones into. Uh, this is a great product. I use it here a lot. I'm enjoying it. It's a multi-channel system, which means that I can have either a bunch of people on stage with the same monitor channel on, or I can set up a bunch of separate monitor groupings, so on the front, the back, that sort of thing. Now, the question is, can this be used at the same time as the U3 or U3C, which are these guys here? And yes, they can. Just make sure they're on different channels. So on the U3 would be for my wireless microphone setup, which is awesome. Again, that is a great feature. I just basically take a microphone, plug that into here, just like that. So I've got my Shure PGA 58, and then I take the other unit and plug that right into here. And it's as simple, simple as that. I now have a wireless microphone system set up. It's 2.4, five millisecond delay, digitally set up. It's great. Now, I set this up, let's say, on channel one. I set this up on channel two, no interference. I can have channel three and four here. I can have channel five and six. I can have three mics and three headsets all on at the same time. Uh, as long as they're on different channels, you will be set. Um, so there you go. So if you're looking to be creative and you're looking for alternatives, remember this can also be used to make your speakers wireless. So that's another good popular reason to buy that. Uh, what I would do is I would reverse it. I would take this out of here and I would plug that into the back of my speaker and then I would plug this unit, which is a transmitter, and I would plug that in up on my main out. So there you go. That's an awesome way of doing things. So yes, the U4, awesome wireless system, five milliseconds, you won't even notice it. Again, five milliseconds for the U3. And as long as they're not on the same channel, that's awesome. So I have a question in regards to a video we did on Headrush and the FRFR112, which we had both Headrush actual head units and the speaker, everybody was playing at the same time. And yes, they were playing through the same speaker. So 
we have two people with their own head rush uh, head units and they've got them in the same room. They're doing their thing together. Like in this case, I had a bass player and a guitar player. They were both playing around with it and it was hooked up to only one of their actual monitor speakers, which was awesome. So uh, yes, you can run them both through this one. Why not? There's no bad problem to that. That's a good thing. So a question from Alan, and it's in reference to the review that we did on the uh, Thump 18S. And the question is, can you plug two thumps into uh, that subwoofer? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Good thing about most of the subs that we have here and that you're gonna buy on a commercial level, like the Thump or the Alto or the Electro Voice Mac, whichever ones you look at, that's, you're going to notice that there's two ins and two outs on these subwoofers. And that allows you to connect two tops, a left and a right, or, or maybe you have to have two on the left side, two on the right side. So you can run those through the actual subwoofer. You can run two. Now remember, you're gonna divide that base between the two, but it's possible and you can do that. So you look at the back panel, you'll see uh, in one, in two, or you know left, right, that sort of thing. It'll always be there and it'll always be accessible. So by all means, just remember, it's gonna be proportionate power-wise. If I had two 12-inch tops, I would definitely only probably need one subwoofer because of the amount of volume that those two 12-inch tops are gonna carry. So there you go. So the answer is yes. You buy one subwoofer, a 15 or an 18, you can definitely plug two tops into that. That's the way they build them. It's a good thing. So on the same product, we've got, in reference to the Thump 18S, uh, Brandon's asking me my opinion what do I think is better, the uh, Mackie Thump or the Alto TS3? Um, they're different. It's like Coke and Pepsi. I mean, I personally drink Coke, so I would tend to favor that. But when it comes to those two speakers, they are completely different beasts. And they are beasts, that's definitely the case. Uh, if you're a fan of Mackie and you've bought in some thumps already, their subwoofer is going to balance off really well with that. Um, it's also a, a design. Right? It's a bandpass design. It's going to radiate a lot more bass from the box without any help from any walls uh, around. So just like I said in the video, if you're going to use that outdoors a lot or in a very large open space and you're trying to keep the bass more to where you are, uh, the Mackie does a really good job. Pure brute power with really good sound uh, above and beyond what you're going to see in that class range that it sells in then definitely the Alto is going to do that job for you. Best bang for the buck probably when it comes to an 18-inch sub. So, I mean, if you get a chance to listen to both of them, you're probably going to make that decision on your own, but you'll, you'll notice those differences. Uh, the Radiant Bass out of the, uh, out of the Mackie versus the tremendous power uh, and bass that you get out of the uh, Alto. But remember, it's an 18-inch, it's a forward-firing driver, so you're going to want to have some distance from the actual driver before it really comes you know, to life. So I wouldn't want to use it in a rec room or in a garage. Uh, I definitely want to use it in a small hall, bar, pub, that sort of thing. So a question from Steve, and this has to do with a video I did just not too long ago. It was about uh, Pyle's new portable compact system with built-in mixer and all of that. It was called the PPHP 210AMX. Uh, it's a portable system, very compact, 10 inch. It does a lot of stuff, sounds really good. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, a, a really great value product, that is for sure. It sounds good, it's worth way more than what it's getting sold for on Amazon right now. So uh, we have it here and I, I honestly think it's gonna become a very popular piece. But his specific question, is it good for using while you know going out and busking, that sort of stuff. So I'm assuming if you're gonna do a street performance, you're gonna need power. And this is not battery operated. So it's not gonna be one of those things I'm gonna to wanna to take along with me. Uh, so funny enough, if you're looking for quality performance, ease of use, and something you can carry around with you, and you know be able to run things like, I think you were asking here, yes, a drum machine, that sort of thing, um, keyboards, all that, have a look at Gemini's a rechargeable line array. They have a nice line array that you can take out. It's got tons of power, great bass response. Uh, it's called a WRX 900 to go. So that's WRX 900 to go. We have a video on that. We should do a new one because that video is kind of old, but that is a great piece to take out and be portable with. So, and it's, you know, a great price as well. 
uh, but it's going to give you that performance that you're looking for without looking like you've you know spent a ridiculous amount of money on something. So there you go. Have a look at that. So a question from Hootie. Now, uh, I mispronounced that. My apologies. Uh, question is, uh, any Bluetooth speakers I can recommend? So he was looking at the Eon 615 video and going, well, you know, it's Bluetooth, but it's the wrong kind of Bluetooth. It's not for streaming. That's for data only, right? Uh, I would go with two of them. One of them, I, I, it's the one Mackie that I really like, uh, except it does have a bit of a price tag on it. It's a Mackie Thump Boosted. Uh, so no, it's not like get extra power to because it's called Boosted. It's Boosted because it has an app and it has the ability to Bluetooth stream and connect two speakers at the same time. So if that's all you're looking for, that's a great way to go. Uh, if you're looking for, a, you know, you can get regular speakers and get a mixer now with Bluetooth. So you, we have a lot of videos on that. There's a bunch of them from Pile, which are very, very popular and very fun and easy to use. And they work great. And they're just as reliable as any other mixer in that category. So have a look at that. Uh, one of those two should work out for you. And here we go. We got a question from uh, Vanessa and she's asking in reference to the PPHP 1537UB. Uh, can the display stop working, but the unit keeps going? And the answer to that question is yes. Uh, the PPHP is from Pile. It's a consumer product when it comes to a party speaker and the display on the back, if something happens to it, uh, I mean, the speaker still works. And if it breaks, then that's pretty off. But at the same time, it may not actually say it, but if you hold the mode button down on the back of the speaker, uh, for about five seconds or so, it may turn the display back on and then everything's back to working again. So uh, hopefully that works. If it doesn't work and it's still under warranty, by all means, send it back to wherever you got it. Uh, if it stopped working, you can still use the RCA plugs on the back and the auxiliary jack on the back to use the speaker. So good luck with that. So we're gonna wrap it up. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for all the comments that everybody leaves. I mean, I just answered a few of the questions that I thought were like, you know, worth definitely answering on the video. Uh, and I only got a week back. So, you know, it's amazing how many questions we get these days. So again, thank you very much for all the questions and all the comments. I appreciate them all. Uh, remember today's Thanksgiving in the States. So tomorrow we're gonna have a video which is gonna be for uh, Black Friday. So we're gonna take a look at Amazon, see what's on sale about a lot of stuff we've been talking about. So if there are things that are worth talking about, I'll have it in that video. So we'll see you tomorrow on that one again. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. And remember, some of the upcoming videos, Behringer's and Mackie, they're coming up soon.